Hello, my name is Simonize and welcome to another Simonize Guide video. In this video, I want to share with you what is simply the best way to be leveling your professions in Season of Discovery. I'm going to give you a crafting plan of what to craft at what skill levels and a shopping list of everything you're going to need to buy. Now, a lot of profession guides will simply have you crafting the cheapest thing at each skill level and then selling that thing to a vendor because no one really wants it. What we're going to do in this guide is we're going to craft things that people actually want to buy. So instead of deleting them at a vendor, we're going to be able to sell them on the auction house and either recoup our crafting costs or sometimes even profit over the cost of the materials. And the way we're going to do that is by crafting things needed for the waylaid supplies. Everyone likes filling their supply grates to get bonus experience and bonus reputation. And there are waylaid supply items across the full range, one to 300 skill for most of the professions. The one exception is enchanting. There are some waylaid supply items for that profession, but not very many, not enough to really enact this plan with enchanting. Now, if you wanna skip ahead to any particular section of the video, there'll be timestamps in the description and you can look at that. But without further ado, let's get on to leatherworking. For leatherworking, we're starting out with light armor kit. We just got to craft enough of these till we can get up to 25 skill. The blue highlight means that it's a filler item. It's not actually something great to sell, but we need to do it to skill up. The orange highlight for hand stitch leather belt means this is a waylaid supply item. It's great. You're going to want to sell this on the auction house. We'll do some embossed leather vests also. And while you could do more belts, I try to diversify as much as possible because it's much easier to sell 30 belts and 30 vests than it would be to sell 60 belts, you know? Next, we have embossed leather gloves, another filler item. You're just trying to get up to 100 skill. 20 should almost certainly do it, but you might get there with a little less. You might need a little more. You're trying to get to cured medium hide and then make 20 of those. So you can move on to dark leather cloak and Hillman's shoulders, more waylaid supplies, cured heavy hides, 60 of these, and then another filler item, Hillman's cloak, getting you up to 175 to begin crafting barbaric shoulders, which moves you into guardian gloves. And then here you can either go with the filler item, nightscape headband, which is what I recommend, or you can go with the waylaid supply item, turtle scale bracers. But the turtle scales tend to be really expensive on my server, and it's one of the few waylaid supply items that isn't always profitable to craft. The great thing about Nightscape Headband is if you're buying thick leather for seven silver or less, you literally vendor these for the same cost as the materials, so you're pretty much breaking even getting free skill ups here anyways. Then you're going to want to move on to Nightscape Pants, and the Nightscape Pants have to get you up to 250 to unlock Rugged Armor Kit. Then you can move into Wicked Leather Bracers and Runic Leather Bracers. These last two are recipes that you have to get out in the world. The Wicked Leather Bracers come from Lagashi Rogue and Ashara, and the Runic Leather Bracers come from Jadenar Cultus in Fellwood. But for the home stretch up to 300 skill in leatherworking, it's definitely worth picking up these patterns or going out and farming them yourself. And here we have the full shopping list. If you just wanna buy everything you need for leatherworking to level it one to 300, it's right there. Plus those two patterns, Wicked Leather Bracers and Runic Leather Bracers. Next up, we have blacksmithing, starting out with rough sharpening stone. Another filler item, we gotta get up to our grinding stones. And it is a lot of grinding stones. Be sure to train journeyman blacksmithing before you craft all these rough grinding stones because you're going to be able to skill up beyond the 75 limit you have initially. So don't just totally go AFK while crafting the rough grinding stones. After the rough grinding stones come the coarse grinding stones and then you'll finally be able to move into an actual waylaid supply item, ruined copper pants, into silver skeleton key and rough bronze boots. Then you're looking for heavy grinding stone. We'll use a couple of those later. And then patterned bronze bracers is another filler item. You're trying to get up to 165 skill so you can craft green iron bracers. Then again, we're diversifying, crafting a couple massive iron axes. This one's sold from a vendor recipe in Stranglethorn Vale. If you can't get your hands on the massive iron axe recipe, just go for more green iron bracers until you can craft heavy mithril gauntlets. Then we get some mithril coifs again just diversifying here dense grinding stone thorium belt is excellent this is a world drop recipe you're gonna have to buy the recipe for this on the auction house and then thorium shield spike 
there really isn't anything else great to finish off your blacksmithing up to 300. And Thorium Shield Spike is another recipe you're gonna have to buy. And here's the full shopping list for blacksmithing one to 300, plus that Thorium Belt recipe, Massive Iron Axe recipe, and Thorium Shield Spike recipe. The items highlighted in yellow, these ones come from a vendor, so don't be buying these on the auction house. Some players will list those for way more than they actually cost from the vendor, so don't be fooled by that. Next up is tailoring, and in tailoring, you're gonna craft a lot of bolts of cloth, starting out with 125 bolt of linen cloth. This is gonna get you enough skill level as well as enough bolts of linen cloth to then craft 25 brown linen pants and 25 brown linen robes. And then we upgrade to wool and make 70 bolt of wool cloth that we put into 35 gray woolen shirts. That should get us up to the silk level where we craft an astounding 340 bolt of silk cloth. Right after that, we've got a filler item, azure silk pants. We're trying to get up to 170 skill with these to unlock formal white shirts. So however many azure silk pants you need to get there, craft that many and then stop. With the formal white shirts, we can start out crafting five and then we'll get to 175 and unlock bolt of mage weave. I'd recommend you craft all your mage weave right there, then go back to crafting however many more formal white shirts you have left to craft. This should get you up to around 185 skill and be able to craft green silken shoulders, another filler item. But if you don't wanna craft another filler item like this and you can get the rich purple silk shirt recipe, that's a great one to do instead of the green silken shoulders. However, it is a rare world drop recipe. You might not be able to get that. Anyways, we're moving on to crimson silk pantaloons, a trainer recipe, lots of silk needed here, but we finally use up the rest of our silk and we can move on to five mage weave bags. Another filler, but it's one people will probably buy, so you're probably not losing too much money. That gets you up to the black mage weave headband level at 230 skill. We're crafting about 12 of these to get us up to the tuxedo shirt level. This one is a recipe that comes from a vendor. If you can't get your hands on that, you can just craft more black mage weave headbands to 250, which unlocks the final stage, rune cloth. We make a bunch of bolt of rune cloth, and then we make a bunch of rune cloth belt. The 40 rune cloth belts might get you to 300 tailoring. It might not. You can craft as many more rune cloth belts as you want to get up to 300 or start crafting other more advanced tailoring recipes. The full shopping list for tailoring looks like this with actually the majority of the different items coming from vendors in threads and dyes. But we will need a hefty amount of cloth with linen wool, a tremendous amount of silk, and a decent amount of mage weave and rune cloth to finish this one off. After tailoring, we have possibly the best one, alchemy. You pretty much only craft waylaid supply items with this one, starting off with 80 minor healing potions. Then you're gonna take some of the minor healing potions, turn them into lesser healing potions. You're trying to get up to 110 skill to craft healing potion. But if you don't wanna craft the lesser healing potion kind of filler items, they're kind of junk, and you can get a swiftness potion recipe, I recommend doing that instead and just selling off all of the minor healing potions you get on the auction house because those are a waylaid supply item. Either way, you get to 110, you craft some healing potions, then you craft some fire oil, then you craft some elixir of firepower, some greater healing potions, some elixir of agility, elixir of greater defense, greater mana potion, and then we come to another filler item. Elixir of Detect Undead is a very easy one, comes from the trainer, very low material cost, but it's kind of worthless. If you can get a recipe Gift of Arthas, that slots in in the exact same spot. And I would definitely recommend crafting Gift of Arthas in this slot rather than Detect Undead, because Gift of Arthas, you can sell on the auction house. People actually want that potion. Either way, you make it up to 260 skill, which unlocks superior mana potion, and then you can go up to major healing potion to finish it off and get to 300 alchemy. The full shopping list for alchemy looks like this with a wide variety of different herbs. So you shouldn't be too screwed if like one particular herb is overpriced. You know, we use a wide variety here and make a whole bunch of different potions. Finally, we have everyone's favorite classic era profession, engineering. Now engineering being what it is, the full crafting plan simply does not fit on one page. It is too thick. Now there are also no 
filler items in this crafting plan. It is all components for waylaid supply items and waylaid supply items. So this one is really clean. You should not lose money leveling engineering like this because you should be able to sell pretty much everything you craft. We're starting out with rough blasting powder and handful of copper bolts, which will help us craft our first waylaid supply item, rough copper bomb. Then we're gonna make an arc light spanner. It's a tool we're gonna need later. Don't worry about it. Of course, blasting powder, copper modulator, silver contact, bronze tube, small bronze bomb is another waylaid supply. Then we go up to heavy blasting powder, whirring bronze gizmo, and we make some ornate spy glasses. Those are another waylaid supply. Don't throw those away. Be sure to put those on the auction house. Next, we're building up to try to make some compact harvest reaper kits. And the first piece we want to make for those is iron struts, then gold power core, then bronze framework, some gyro chronotums. And before we actually craft those harvest reaper kits, we're gonna sneak in some solid blasting powder crafting. This just optimizes the skill ups a little bit. But then we make our five compact harvest reaper kits, then our big iron bombs. Now we're moving into the mithril section. We're gonna start out with mithril tubes, unstable triggers, and then mithril casings. Then we can make mithril blunderbuss, deadly scope, and high explosive bomb. Deadly Scope is a recipe that comes from a vendor. If you can't get your hands on that, simply craft more Mithril Blunderbuss. They fit in the same skill range. After the High Explosive Bomb, we're going to Dense Blasting Powder, Thorium Widget, and finally Thorium Grenade. Now these 25 widgets and 25 grenades might not push you all the way to 300. You could craft more widgets, more grenades, or you could go for the other waylaid supply item in this range, which is the thorium rifle, but that has a much higher material requirement on it. Now the shopping list for engineering, I was able to fit on one page and here it is for you here with 24 weak flux from a vendor and 10 heavy stock from a vendor, the rest being trade goods that you're probably buying on the auction house. And that brings us to the end of the video. Like I said near the start, enchanting doesn't really have enough waylaid supply items to make a waylaid supply leveling plan like this. So we left that one out, just the big five, alchemy, engineering, tailoring, leatherworking, and blacksmithing in this video. Now there are a lot of little bits of information in this video of crafting reagents, crafting skill levels, crafting quantities, all this kind of stuff. I did my absolute best to double check and triple check the information here, but it's very possible I did make an error somewhere. And if I did make an error and I find it, I'll put it in the pinned comment below. Otherwise, the pinned comment will say, no errors found yet. So be sure to check that just in case before you go buying everything for one of these professions. And while you're down there, leave a comment and tell me if you liked the video. I really appreciate hearing that. And I hope you're having fun in Season of Discovery. I hope you're excited for Phase 3 and Phase 4. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching.